hi guys this is our film and welcome back welcome back welcome back to another video uh if you're new here you're welcome and if you're a returning subscriber you know the drill thank you so much for tuning in thank you for coming back to see another video so guys uh if you don't know who i am my name is Akubio, as stated i am a nigerian but i lived in poland recently moved to canada and uh, this is how i did it so let's not talk so much let's get into the gist for today All right. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. so i'm going to do like backtrack start the whole gist from when it all started back in 2018 i had decided to leave nigeria and i wanted to come abroad to do my masters right as at the time i had three different things i was considering so i wanted number one three different places i was considering so i was thinking to go to europe for my masters and i was looking at going to germany because free tuition or norway because free tuition or i was looking to go to canada for studies or i think my last option was somewhere in australia but i couldn't afford in as much as it was free there were so many things that were involved in the europe like the norway and the germany part so i couldn't afford it as i then i had just started working like a year i was a year into my first job fresh out of uni i started working in 2017 ending and this was 2018 a year later me trying to make this decision of moving so i spoke with someone and that's how someone recommended poland to me as i then i had only 700k saved and i was like ah, where do i want to carry 700k to long story short i was able to figure it out and move to poland and i lived in poland for five beautiful years the best i had the best time living there uh if you want to hear the story of my like how i moved to poland and just see a glimpse of my life in poland i do have a i'm going to tag the video up here however i have a whole playlist on living in poland i had the time of my life in that country like to think that this was a country that i absolutely did not want to visit or sorry did not want to move to i didn't like it there when i first moved to poland in 2019 i was not happy i wanted to leave so i decided to draft out a plan of what my next steps were i just wanted to finish my masters and get out of there because i didn't have any friends language and all the other barriers that were were affecting me then i just wanted to leave there right so i came up with a plan i was considering different options as well one thing with me i'm going to lay out all my plans write out all the different options calculate and choose which one would work of course and pray sorry i'm going to pray as well but anyway i would do all of the groundwork before i make a decision on something so i decided i'm going to put that thing on the screen i decided that i had different options one of my options was to move to canada the next option was to still go and do a phd but this time around go back to the germany that i wanted to go to in the first place or move to the u.s or I don't remember what the last option was, but yeah, I had, and then I decided to like check which, 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 like which one is obtainable. Now, the reason why Canada entered my mind was as at the time, there's like the buzz started on social media. Oh, everybody was moving to Canada. So the buzz was all over the place. And my sister caught that buzz. So she and her friends, group of doctors, they were all trying to leave Nigeria and they decided to start the whole process. So she had given me the info on, the whole process i was like okay you know what go ahead do your thing and let me know how it goes we had a whole conversation and we're like it would be very good if we can all move to this country like myself her and my younger ones and would all like just be here in canada and would like have a second base here rather than being all over the place because in as much as jackpot started to be something that was like in the air in nigeria then we also knew about the whole issue of, oh, if we jack out to different places, we would be scattered all over the world and we'll miss out on a lot of things as a family. So we decided that this was something that we should look into. So immediately me, I heard it and I was like, fine, I like it because I'm even looking for a way because I don't even know if I want to be here anymore. So I was like, okay, let me tell all my friends that uh, this is the plan. Let us all, like, let us all come together and start to reason how we can all move to Canada so that I would not just have my family with me, I would also have my friends. That was my genius plan. And I told my friends, as at this time, I think it was already start of 2020 and all. So I told my friends about it. And we did create a WhatsApp group. So I created a WhatsApp group with a bunch of my friends. Uh, 
Queen Esther, who just got engaged recently. I think he might two vlogs ago she was engaged. The last vlog, I don't remember, but she was engaged. I mean, she's engaged now. So Queen Esther was on that group as well as Kay, and then a couple of other of my friends that if you have been watching this channel, you probably already have seen them at one point or the other. They were all on that group. So we're all planning for moving to Canada. We called that group just like an accountability group. We all wanted to like share one information because I was tired of having to have that conversation with multiple friends. That was another reason. I wanted to just have a place where I'll just dump one information and everybody knows that this is what we are doing and this is what I found out about the full process. So we all went into research mode. Everybody started to research about all the different ways that you could come into Canada, either by express entry, PMP and all of that. So we had our first assignment on the group was for everybody to go and uh, research on the 10 different provinces in Canada and decide, okay, some things that should be your presentation should be things like, why should you move to Alberta, for example? What are the tax percentages? What are the jobs in demand? And all of that, how is life like in that city? What are the tourist areas? Just things that will make someone want to go there, right? So everybody we shared the thing accordingly. Different people took different provinces. We all did the research. We came back, we did the whole presentation. Everybody dropped their slides in the WhatsApp group. And we also, and then everybody now, like the initial plan was that if it was possible for all of us to move to one province. But when that whole research came out, people fell in love with different provinces and everybody started saying, ah, me, I want to go here. Me, I no longer want to go here. Me, I want to go here. But it was fine. It was all for it. We're all for it. The next thing was we decided that we we're going to do IELTS. Uh, so we renamed that group to Have You Studied for IELTS Today? So uh, the resources that I used to prepare for IELTS back then, I used IELTS Lease, I used J, there's one other guy, J, I think he's E2 Advanced or something. I've forgotten the name of that, his channel. And some other YouTube channels that I found very helpful at the time. All of us were like dumping, oh, this is where I'm studying from, this is where I'm studying from. So sometimes we would even pick like a listening quiz and would all like practice and we'll mark each other and all of that. <sighs> we were like very dedicated to this thing. So this was 2020 as at this time. COVID now started in that 2020. So as COVID started, it was not yet like, it was not yet a situation of lockdown or anything. It was just, okay, the gist was all over the place. We now agreed that, okay, everybody should go and write IELTS. The people that could afford it or the people that were ready to write should go and write IELTS. So I think Esther, Queen Esther, was the first person who went to write that IELTS. And when she wrote it, she came back and she had like very good results on her first try. And that's how she kind of gingered everybody to take the exam. So myself and Kay, we went and took the exam. The other people, they were not so gingered yet because another big issue that we were all facing then was money, the proof of funds that was involved in the Canada thing. So not everybody had the money. Of course, there was a gift bid option, but still, you would still want to have enough money to be able to do the whole process, right? So me at the time, I was almost done with my master's. So I still did not have any serious savings. I had a job then, so but it was not really any serious savings. I took my, my I managed to take my 820 zloty and I traveled all the way to Katowice, which was where I wrote my first IELTS and I wrote the exam. Like I felt like I had really knew English until I wrote the exam and English said, I do not know you. Ha! My first result. It wasn't so bad, but my listening was really low. It was 6.5 and if you know, okay, basically, I um, the whole express entry route, this is the summarized steps. Step one, okay, let me not give steps. <laughs> but basically, you need to have your IELTS, your WES evaluated, that's your degree evaluated. Uh, you get more points for being younger than 30. You get more points for having ex job experience of over three years, which as at the time, I didn't have up to that because I had just started working in ending of 2017. Then I moved to Poland by 2019 for master's. So my three years was not even completed. So yes, you need to have this. You also have you need to have like proof of funds and police records and all of those things. And your scores are calculated based on these different things. So you have different points for different things. So when you put all your points together, you would now have a CRS score. So based on your CRS score, the immigration, the Canadian immigration, every Wednesday back then, every Wednesday they would go into the pool and choose, for example, if they say this week we want to draw 3,500 people, so they would choose the first 3,500 people based on score. So the least score would be like the 
will be like the cutoff mark for that draw. So that's how it works. So you just need to have all your documents, everything, and join the pool, calculate your score, have your score calculated for you, and just be chilling till the day that you get pulled out of the pool. And when you get pulled out of the pool, then the process starts. So the process does not start until you get picked out. Invitation to apply, ITA, that's what they call it. So until you get your ITA, your process is still in the process. It's still in the works. So yes, so that was it. So Esther got into the pool. Uh, myself and Kay, sorry, we wrote the IELTS and IELTS told us that we don't know anything. So our results were not too great. So that's how Kay now decided to go and rewrite. Me, I was feeling too tense and I was very, very pissed because I had just spent over 820 zloty plus my train fare to Katowice and I had even booked an Airbnb to stay in Katowice because of the time of the exam, only for this rubbish to happen. I don't think I'm going to spend my money on any IELT again, you know, like I was afraid of failing, to be honest. The whole money thing was just a, an excuse. But the real reason why I didn't want to write the IELTS because I was afraid that I was going to fail again. So I was kind of hesitant on writing that exam. So Kay wrote it again, and this time around she passed, and she got into the pool, and they got ITA. Now, when they got ITA, that was when I was like, things are starting to get serious. My friends that were doing this thing together, they are, they are headed somewhere, me and Kay okay, maybe I should give it a try. As I was about to give it a try, that was how COVID happened, like full-blown lockdown. Canada stopped inviting people and everything was shut down completely. As at this time, my sister had already started, her, like she was already far gone in her process. Esther and, and Kay had also gone ahead in their process. So I was kind of locked out and I was, I was like, maybe this thing is not for me. Let me focus on my Poland and figure things out. Now the Poland that I was not entirely happy with when i first came as at this period i had already started to make friends i started getting used to the place life started to get a bit comfortable i got a better job and i didn't start i, I didn't hate the place anymore so when you hear people say i don't like a place you just got here sis calm down so that was that's that's the moral of the story you need to calm down and allow, and allow time to pass because it's only time if time passes and you still don't like the city then okay fine but i don't think you are uh, you should be judging a city based on how many weeks or how many months you stayed in. You should just give it time. So yeah, after time had passed and I started to fall in love with Poland as at this time. And then I started to start making videos. I made so many videos. People started to watch my videos. People started to ask questions. Oh, I want to move to Poland, blah, blah, blah. And that's how I started to give information on moving to Poland and all of that. All my friends, the rest of my friends that were in that WhatsApp group, they were like, let us also come to Poland as Canada team is not working and Canada is closed. They also tried. Poland did their thing. Embassy did their thing. So it was not possible. So a lot of them couldn't come. That's how a chunk of them went to the UK. That's how that that's why that time you saw that I had a lot of friends in the UK because that transition happened and most of them moved to the UK then. And it was fine. Life was going okay. I had a good job at this time. I was getting my savings up. My money was going up. I wasn't saving because of Canada. I was just saving because of um I was just saving because of financial whatever. So I was just saving and investing and all of that. Now the initial plan like that started all of this whole thing was my sister when myself when my sister started the whole thing we had a conversation that we best for all of us in my family though. So her, me and my other brothers to move to Canada and have Canada as our second home rather than being scattered around around the world, right? Because you know the effect of jackpot on families, how uh, siblings are everywhere and you don't really have everybody together. So we wanted to avoid that. So that was the reason why she was pushing for me to try to come. But at this time, Canada had closed this border, so there was no way for me to proceed with this process. And I was already in the pool, so I did my West evaluation that 2020. So basically, so basically what the West evaluation was is, so you only evaluate your highest credential so at this time, I had graduated, I had a master's degree, so I evaluated just my master's degree. There was no need for me to evaluate the bachelor's degree from Nigeria. So uh, on West website, if you put your the, the country of your school as well as the name of your school, you will get information on the process for your school. Most schools in Poland have three options. So the first option, actually most schools in Europe, they have three options. So the first option is you register on west and get like a west number you pay about 220 card 
dollars we pay 220 dollars and then you get like a registration uh, number and then the number you can proceed to take the number to your university and have your university send your transcript and your uh, certificate to west by themselves but they would include that number or they can send it via that send it to them they can either send it via post or they can send it via email those are the possible options and then the last option is that the school would put everything in an envelope seal it have their stamp on the seal like on the flap of the envelope and give to you and then you would proceed to use dhl to send it to west now my own university professor university of science and technology then they didn't have any problem when i explained what i was doing with it i told them i wanted to go i wanted my results my documents evaluated because i was moving to canada for for studies that's what i told them so they just did the whole thing for me they sent the document to west but i know recently someone reached out to me and said oh i'm in poland and i tried and it wasn't my school is not accepting so you can just take the third option so they give you the document but make sure they have a seal on it and then you do the sending yourself the process takes about three weeks from when you send to them and when they approve and they send you back your your documents that have been evaluated so yeah so i've done that i then uh IELTS did not work out right so at this point i was already in the pool but 2020 i just packed it up because covid happened life was everybody knows what 2020 was like so yeah that was what happened then so my profile expired in 2020 i did an hour in 2021 profile expired I did an hour in 2022. Now, by 2022, two years had passed. Canada did not happen for two years. So now, 2022 was when Canada now started to open again. They started to do draws, for, but the draws were not for a skilled worker visa. It was mostly for PMP. And I didn't get any nomination. I didn't apply. Let me not say I didn't get. I didn't apply for any, any nomination in any province. I was just hoping that... A federal skill worker work for me because as at the time my sister had now reached as of 2022 my sister had now moved to canada all my two friends that i mentioned they had also moved to canada but my sister is the most important focus <laughs> so my sister moving gave me extra 15 points and as at this time i had almost everything now because i had worked for over three years i had my savings i had saved almost 100k slotty so i had that saved already um I had, um, what else? I had my West. I, it was only IELTS that my result was still low as at this 2022. So when the thing now started to open, my sister was like, go and write, go and write, go and write this exam. So I decided to go and write the exam. This second time, I had a conversation with AC. She was my gym partner there, my gym buddy. I told her that this was what I was doing. And she was like, oh, even her, she's looking at the whole Canada route. And we read together, we studied. This time around, I just studied with only SA. Myself and SA, we used to go to Pratsuavia and then study. Then from there, we'll go to the gym. So we both studied, we went and wrote the exam. And when my exam came out, this time around, I was so confident in what I had done because I was like, I now know English. It's been two years. English cannot tell me it doesn't know me. The result came out. It was so beautiful. It was such a beautiful result. And then when I zoomed into the result, I saw that my listening had, had taken a hit. My listening had moved from... D8 or 8.5 down to 7 and that was not going to help my course in like, it was not going to help me because it was when I put the new scores on my profile my score was still very low because I was looking for ways to make my score really high and this IELTS did not work out I was so angry another 820 is lot spent this time around I had written this exam in Krakow I was like ah was happening like i traveled i think i even made a vlog that period i went to crack impromptu and you guys thought it was just vibes but basically that was what i went there for i didn't talk about all of this then because i didn't want to talk about something that had not yet happened i don't like to talk about something that hasn't happened yet so i decided to ask for a remark because they told me it was possible since it was just listening and the writing this time around was good i don't want to touch the writing because i felt like if i write again i might fuck up i might not pass so i just said let me just do the remark i tried to do remark 250 slots or thereabouts paid wasted because when the result came out it was the exact same thing nothing changed <sighs> i was upset i was so upset anyway i decided you know what that was september 2022 i said let me write this exam again i paid this time around i wrote it in virtual this time around i did uh, computer based because the previous times i was doing like the handwritten one this time around i was like i'm just going to do computer based because that was what was available not because 
I like either written or computer based one is better than one. So just because that was what was available in Broadway, so I didn't have to travel again. So I booked it immediately, and I just like did a refresher. As at the time, I had joined this Olu of Canada. There was this guy on on Instagram. He had like a Telegram group, so I joined this group, and I was on that group trying to like get information. Even though every single Wednesday they were doing draws and nothing was really favoring me because my scores were too low. As I then, all the draws that they were doing, the scores were like 500 and 500 and, and me at this point, I, I don't remember what my score was, but it was like 460 something or 450 something. I don't remember, but it was quite low. So when I did the next IELTS, thankfully I passed. Everything was shining. I put everything up and at this time, my score now became 487. So with my sister being in Canada and also work experience and then my IELTS being very high, the score was now 487. So now I started to pray because the score started coming down small, 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 but it wasn't coming down fast enough. So every single Wednesday, they would do those draws and my heart would just sink every time that my number is not called, you get. So now life was happening, right? I was working, life was going on. Uh, my husband, so my boyfriend at the time, we started to think about, we're already planning on getting married in 2023. This was 2022. So I did a research about the whole getting married thing. And I knew very well that if we got married before my, I, my IT happened, it would mean, it would change the dynamics of everything. Basically, he would have to, would have to apply as a couple. So he would need to write IELTS, do his West evaluation and all of that. And uh, uh, that was not my plan. Mm -mm. So we decided that we're going to wait because it was possible for you to add your spouse after IT, because my sister did it, Kay did it, so I had people who had done it, so I knew exactly what it entailed. So I was like, okay, it would be better for us to get married in between when I get ITA and before I get my ready to apply for visa. So when my application is being processed, that period, so you can just add your spouse, because when you add your spouse there or your child, that's a child that you have a you have gotten within before like after the ITU, the child should not be before IT. But when you've added someone like a dependent in between that wait period, basically your dependents, the only things you need to do is to fill some forms and add proof of relationship as well as increase your proof of funds just in case you had given a smaller proof of fund for one person because now your family has grown. So that's the only thing that's entailed. So this was a better option than that whole thing. So Fast forward to 2023, we, from our own end, like the whole wedding thing was already going on, talks, family, and all of that. If you want to know about my wedding, please go and watch my wedding series. So yeah, all of that was already happening. And one glorious day in March, I decided to go to the gym. It was a Wednesday. I had called my gym buddy. We were supposed to meet up. And uh, they had done a draw before I left my uh, apartment. And I saw that that draw for that day, that was... March 23rd, 2023, the draw was 484. I was like, I've gotten it. I went to that, our, this thing, our group, and I noticed that a lot of people were like, oh, I got IT, I got IT, I got the email, I got the email. Me, I wasn't getting any email. I was like wondering, have I done something wrong? How come me, I don't have the email yet? But everybody was like, okay, just chill till, I think it takes about 24 hours for you to get the email, so just chill. So on my way to the gym, I carried my bag. I was like, ah, let me go to the gym. That's how, boom, on the tram, I got the email. Ah, I wanted to scream, but I was on the tram. I just was waiting for the tram to meet the next stop. The next stop was going to be the train station. I was like, I'm going to get out and I'm going to scream. We got to the train station. I got out. I screamed so, like, I was so happy. I called a few friends, my sister and all of that. And then I called Essie and I was like, gym what? We are not going to any gym. Let's meet at Rotswabia. I need to tell you some good news. That's how I met with Essie, and then this happened. <sighs> Guys, this is me. After I have seen the Canada Express entry draw, and the cutoff is 484, and my point is 487. Guys, <sighs> I'm on the floor. Cool. I'm waiting for the email. The email usually takes the email usually takes some time to come. But guys, I have 
Jesus. God, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Upstairs, where? Yeah, I don't even know. So, guys, if you remember, I never vlogged it. Let me not say if you remember. You did not remember because you don't know. You don't know anything. You don't know, you don't know nothing. That time, myself and they closed it. Myself and Ace used to come to this part of Rotswavia, up there, up there, to study for IELTS. IELTS. To study for IELTS. After writing IELTS three times, three times, three times with one remark, so four times, four months since 2020. This is 2023. Three years later, God have did it. God have did it. So that means our LIP vlogs, living in Poland vlogs, are about to hit control P, P for pause. <laughs> Watch out for the new vlog. Watch out for the new vlog. Funny enough, do you know when I'm going to post these, these videos I'm making now? I'm going to post them when I'm in Canada. Yes, yes, yes. That's when I'm going to post it. And I'll put the time, I'll put the dates on the, this thing so that you'll see that this happened. Yes. We're going to Canada. <laughs> okay, bye. That was when the whole thing now started because this is the moment where you've gotten ITA and it's time for you to start the whole process. Now, before I even got the ITA, things I had done. Number one, I had already done my WES and IELTS. That one is pretty straightforward. The next thing I had also done was I had um, gone ahead to reach out to my employers, so my past employers, and I had told every single one of them that I needed a reference letter because this is very important. So I had a template of what a reference letter, the reference letter should be like. So basically, the document to state your name, to state the period which you worked and the role that you worked. It will state how much you earned and it would also state your duties. So like the job description. So what I did was I went to the NOC I had picked. I looked at the job description on that NOC and I made sure that at least 80% of what was described, which was actually what I was doing, was written and was reflecting on all my three recommendation letters or reference letters. So I got one for my employer in Nigeria and then two for my employers in Poland. If, if you're in Poland, it's really not hard. You just need to, normally you know that your uh, HR would give you a letter stating like a certificate. Like when I was applying for UK visa, they gave me something like a certificate just stating that I am a worker. But this time around, that's not what you're looking for. You need to give them details of what to have in that letter. So salary, time of working as in terms of full-time or part-time or whatever uh duration of working how long have you worked for the company and of course your rules and make sure that the things that you've done in your role should align with what is on the noc so basically they will give you that document um i'd also found out about medicals and all of that so i knew everything that i needed to know so in poland for example <laughs> For medicals, if you go on the IRSCC website, you would see the list of all the approved medical places to go to to have your medical test, and you would get all the information. So me, what I did was I called all the doctors there because there were like a couple of them. So there were some in Krakow, some in Warsaw. I think those were the two closest to me, Krakow and Warsaw. So I called all those hospitals and tried to find out what the process was and how much it was going to cost. And I found out that there was this particular hospital in Warsaw. I'm going to put it on the screen. It was the cheaper option. Because I think, I don't remember how much it was, but it was cheaper than going to Krakow. Because the Krakow one was over a thousand zloty, while the one in Warsaw was about 800 or 900. So I was like, I'm going to go to Warsaw. I'll use the opportunity to even stay at Angela and Princess's house. So that was the plan. They knew about the whole Canada process. So obviously, I was going to spend time there with them. So I had all of that settled. So immediately I got the ITA, you're given 30 days to bring all the documentations of all the claims that you've said. You say you have bachelor masters, you say you have work experience or you have bring it. So basically uh, for medicals, they asked for medicals. So I just had to call back that doctor because I had called him in 2022 to ask about the details. 
And I just, when that thing happened in March, I just, like when I got the IT in March, I just called him and I said, oh, uh, I don't know if you remember me. He, I don't think he did. But I was like, I'm so, so, and so, and this is what I'm looking for. And he was like, okay, sure. Come to the hospital on this day and come with your passport photograph and your uh, candidate number and all of that. So I went for the medicals there. Okay. Um, hi, guys. So I'm done with the medicals now. I've done what I came here to do. <laughs> so I'm done with it. Uh, up next, I'm just going to the city center. I think I'm supposed to do some x-rays as well. And then I'm supposed to see a friend. So yeah, that's it. Um, I went for the medicals there. I also decided to do police. Of course, police report is one of the things that you're required to have. So you have to do police reports of the places that you've lived at an extended period of time. I think if you've lived there for more than six months, you must have a police report from that place. So as I then, I'd only lived in two, two countries, so Nigeria and Poland. So for Nigeria, I was able to do, you can do your police reports from Nigeria. Either you do it on their website, so there's a website, or if you have, if you know someone who works in the police, um, you can get it, yeah. You can have to send your fingerprints and all of that, and you run like a police report for you from Nigeria and generate it for you. But for Poland, uh, basically, very simple. You just need to go to KRK as the court, um, the Ministry of Criminal Records. You can go on their website. I'll put it. Everything will be in the description box. So I'm going to put links of what I use to study for IELTS. I'm going to put links of um, every other link that's important. So you go to that website. So it's like the Ministry of Criminal, uh, Criminal and Justice in Poland. You go on the website, KRK. That's what it is. If you just Google KRK, you would see the website if you're in Poland. You'd see it up to come up. So you go there and try to apply for a police report for yourself. That's one way. I think it, it cost about 25 zloty. Or in my own case, what happened was I applied online. I was not patient enough to wait for it to come back. And I had left for Warsaw for my medical. So when I got to Warsaw, I just went to the ministry itself. There's a physical location somewhere in Warsaw. I would put this put it on the screen as well. Uh, I went there and it was, it took me about 15 minutes or 10 minutes to get it done. You just go there, you give them your personnel, they will run a quick background check on you. And if you don't come up in any of their criminal records, you would get the document and you stamp it. You pay your 25 zloty and you're on your way out. So that's how I got the criminal record for, uh, for Poland. Uh, what else? Proof of funds, yes. One thing is, if you're coming from any of these European countries that English is not their primary language, you know that most of the documents you're going to be getting are not going to be in English. So you have to have a translator, a certified translator at your beck and call because most of your documents are going to be translated. So every single document I'm speaking on right now had to be translated to English language. So I had both the physical copy and the translated copy and it must be a certified translator so they can put their certified translator stamp on your document to show that it's original. So even the documents from your work, if your work doesn't give that document in English language, you need a translator to translate it to Polish sorry, to English. So bear that in mind. So for bank, the bank one was a bit tricky. That was, I think that was my hardest one. I went to the bank as a den. So first things first, you need to show proof of funds. So in Poland, if you go and ask for a document for proof of funds, basically what they give you is just a paper stating so so and so person has an account with us with this account number and this is how much is inside. But for the purpose of Canadian immigration, they want more details. They want you to show bank history one so bank history for a period of three months or six months six months i think it was six months you need to show bank history so inflow and outflow of cash from your accounts one all your accounts by the way so as at this time i had a santander account but under santander i had divided my account i had like a euro account i had a saving goal i had multiple saving goals accounts and my money were in different things in the bank so i had like multiple accounts so you need a document for each, like a statement for each account. The next thing is you need a document stating that you do not have any loan. I think it's called a document of non, I'm not sure, I'll write it on the screen. But yes, but basically that document states that you don't owe the bank any money, you don't have any loan, you don't have anything, you're not owing them, you don't have any credits to them. So they, they would give you that. It's not easy for them to give you. I had to speak a lot of English and Polish for them to get this, for, for, for me to get these documents. 
So basically, they have to write that they don't owe you. So me, what I did in this case, Santander Bank wrote a full document. So the document stated, this is my name. These are all my bank accounts. One, two, three, four, five, whatever. And these are all the balances inside. Then in that letter, they wrote that, oh, I don't owe them. I don't have any credits with them. Then I still asked them to give me bank statements of all my saving goals. Because on Santana, they don't have bank statements for saving goals. Like, they don't have history for saving goals. So they couldn't really generate it at first. But back and forth, back and forth, we called head office. There was a lot of back and forth. I almost cried at some point because it was very frustrating. But they were able to generate that document for me and eventually the document was not still enough for me because i felt like they didn't capture everything i wanted them to capture so that's where an explanation letter comes in so when you're uploading your documents when you when i eventually got the ita you'd have to like upload all these documents you, i created different folders on my laptop then i actually brought my laptop because i was thinking maybe i'll look at my laptop if i forget anything but I, <laughs> my memory is still fresh so thank god so you put all your education documents together so the west evaluation your ielts all of them will be in one folder you put your your bank statements and everything together so i translated all of that to, to english everything together you put your police certificate so the one in nigeria the one in poland or whatever country you live that's what me i did i put the one together like that and then there are some other forms that um they would give you you have to also fill all your travel history and if you know me on this channel i was ajala i was going everywhere so i had to fill every single entry so this one was very easy for me because i always take pictures wherever i go or videos so i was just opening my phone and checking the entry when did i leave when did i come out because when you're traveling within the eu nobody's stamping your passport because you're literally traveling with your residence permit so I had to explain all of this in the explanation letter. So you write an explanation letter. So in the explanation letter, I gave like each paragraph to address whatever thing that didn't look like it was clear. So my financial records didn't look like it was clear because of moving of money from one account to the other. And I didn't want them to start to suspect that ah, there's something going on because at some point I was investing money. So, but when I knew that this whole Canada thing was in the, like very close to happening, I had to just move all the monies to one place so that everything is just showing as one box. So, so I had to explain that, oh, if you notice on the so-so-and-so date, you can see a transaction that happened here. This was from my so-so-and-so account to this other account. So I had to explain all of that. Like, explain it very well. Don't give room for any confusion. Then I also explained that all my travel history is documented, but nothing is on my passport because you also have to photocopy your passport from start to finish every single page of your passport needs to be photocopied and also uploaded so i explained that the reason why i don't have all those stamps is because i was traveling with my residence card so yeah had all the documents i put it up there and i saw and i paid the money and i submitted as at the day of my submission this was a few days before my 29th birthday i was still not 30 so it didn't matter whether i turned 30 or whatever it was no longer important at this point so i submitted when I submitted, I think this was on May 6th, I submitted, May 6th, 2023, I submitted the whole thing. And it was time to wait and pray. By May 6th, and then along the whole waiting period, I submitted on May 6th, right? I got engaged on May 27th, and we decided to get married in July. So... I was like, okay, perfect. We'll get married in July and it will still be before they give me a result. Right? Wrong. <laughs> I got uh, my documents. Okay. Uh, then I, I, I got an email for biometrics. So I had to go to Krakow again to go and do my biometrics. That one, if you get an email, they'll give you direction. So you don't need... So from the email, I knew where I was supposed to go. I just went and booked it online, an appointment. And then I went and I did my biometrics and I left. Only for me to... The, I was monitoring my application, of course, and I was seeing the progress of my application. Tell me why June 12th, remember I submitted May 6th, by June 12th or June 13th, I got the email saying that I've, I, like my process was done and I should bring my passport. Remember, my wedding was still ahead, July. As at this time, my wedding was scheduled for July whatsoever. But it was a later date at July. I say, no, this is not happening. You cannot ask me for visa when my, my, <laughs> I'm about to get married. No, no way, no way. So uh, I 
I, I had a whole frenzy. I'm not even going to lie. I became confused because I was praying initially for this thing to be fast. Then at some point, I said, pray for it to be slow. God, God is like, sis, what do you want? Anyway, to cut the long story short, uh, I went ahead and I started writing. Like I did. So if your status changes, they'll tell you in the email that if your status changes, you should send a web form. Like you should create a web form and tell them the update on your life. So I was like, I created web form. I created a web form telling them that I was getting married in July. Uh, as at this time, because July now seemed too far away because they had given me 30 days for, from June 13th to July 13th. That was the timeline for me to submit my passport. And I'd already booked my flight to Nigeria to go and get married. So I was like, this is not going to happen. So I started sending them messages and there were no answering. Like I was creating multiple web forms. It wasn't happening. One thing I did was immediately we moved our court wedding date ahead because there was no way our wedding was scheduled for 19th of July and the deadline for submission was 13th, so it wasn't going to happen. So we now had to move the court wedding to 6th of July, so it came up. So that's how I now created multiple web forms. When I called them on the phone, one of the uh, representatives that spoke to, to me told me, oh, when you're filling the web form, upload your invitation card as well and write details that, oh, this is your invitation card and your wedding is set to happen. So I filled about three or four web forms before they eventually answered. And when they answered, they now created a placeholder. So when they answer you, basically they put a pause to your application at that period. And they'll tell you that, or they'll create a new placeholder. So placeholders for you to upload new documents. So they'll send you a couple of documents for you to fill for your spouse or for your dependent that you're adding now. So new documents, similar to the documents you already filled, so like travel history, police records and all of that, you just open all of that for you to fill for your spouse and add it to your application. So they opened that, we were able to do that. Now, my partner was in the UK then, so UK takes 30 days for you to do your, um, UK takes 30 days for them to process your police report. So what we did was we already applied for that police report even before they had answered and placed the, put the placeholder. So he did the police report from his end from UK as well as booking for biometrics and all of that. Sorry, not biometrics, booking for medicals because you, your spouse needs to do medicals, biometrics, fill all those forms and police reports. That's the only requirement for your, the person you're adding to your application. So basically we did all of that. Eventually went to Nigeria, got married. We added our marriage certificates because you have to add your marriage certificate. Then for proof of sibling, my, my sister had sent her own PR card as well as a utility bill and our birth certificate. So the birth certificate for you and your your sibling that you are claiming that is your sibling, you must have the same surname or the same sorry the same parent name, not surname because people get married, right? So my si sister and I we had the same parents. So we just I put those documents together. That was when I was uploading my documents at first. So now this second time, we uploaded and we paid and we now sent in the application. This was July. What now? I don't remember, but we sent it by July. And we started waiting. At this point, we were married, living in two different countries and all of that. Time had time was going a little bit. We we're just hoping that everything would work out. Things were not working out as fast as we thought it would. In our head, we thought it was going to be very fast, but it ended up being very fast. But I don't know, we just had we wanted it faster. But it sure happened fast enough because we submitted that same July ending or August. I've forgotten which of the dates, but we submitted around either ending of July or start of August. Then the whole of August, it was just the application was processing. We didn't really get any any real updates, right? Uh, as at September, I was in the UK. I went to London. There's a London vlog. In that London vlog, on that day, I met with my friend Italian and her husband, and then this happened. So today is the 9th of September, so 0909, and as at this time, I'm actually in London, and as at this time, I haven't still gotten the email from the Canadian uh, IRCC, right, about my PR, our PR. So this is me just walking as an act of faith. I can see Canada flags over there. I don't know if it's the Canadian embassy. I don't know what it is. 
but I'm just going to be here and I'm going to say a prayer. I need my email to come out. We need to get our care email. And this is just me having a prophetic moment. I don't know what this is, but I hope it counts for something. So I'm just going to be here and just prophesy. Yeah, me and my future country. Just finished doing the prayer work. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. As I did things, we got an email to bring our passport. So basically, if you want to count the process it took us, we submitted our passports at the end of September, and five days later, our passports were returned. We didn't submit in the same city. I had to go back to Wrocław. I submitted my passport in Warsaw, and my partner submitted his in Birmingham. So we were like, we submitted passports in different places. Like we literally did our applications in like two different countries. So yes, we submitted all of that. There's one thing I missed. When you are submitting your spouse documents, you need to put proof of your relationship. So we had to put a timeline of our relationship. You have to answer some relationship questions. There are a lot of questions they'll ask you. Like how, how, how did you propose? Or how did you guys, like where did the proposal happen? How long have you predicted? Do you, did your family know about people's relationship? Show pictures of your whole marriage process. So things like you put pictures, 10 pictures to tell your relationship story. So we had all of that put in the document when we're submitting and all of that. So yeah, something that I forgot to mention. So yeah, eventually our passports were back to us in five days. Mine was actually back to me in five days. My husband's son got this. <laughs> that passport, go punish DHL. But let's not get into it. The passport that was sent from London office was somehow, it was sent to Birmingham, but somehow the passport found its way in Glasgow. Long story short, after back and forth with DHL, the passport got to him and we both had our passports. And uh, hi guys. Just got my passport back, guys. Yep. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, my Lord. What we've waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. What we've waited for has come to pass. Hey, the package, they come. The package, they open, they open, they open, they <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's how we came here that's literally the story of how we got here i know this video was long so if you watched it all the way to this point thank you so much like i my throat is dry thank you so much for watching this video so um of course if you have any questions especially like there are two sets of people that i'm actually open to answering questions for if you live in europe and you're trying like and you're embarking on this process if you need any questions you need anything you can ask me i'll tell you how i did mine you can reach out to me on instagram my ig is ahobiworm so a w h o b e e w o r m i'm going to put it on the screen my handle you can reach out to me there to ask me questions if you're doing this process from europe and you need some clarity because it's very important when you're on this journey ah this journey is very it's a journey of patience and a journey of confusion you need to ask people questions so that you don't do rubbish so if you need to ask any question about it you can reach out to me and i'll answer you, you can also drop a comment if you want i'll answer you there as well and if you are like me that you go you you go married like your status changed along your process you could also reach out to me and i'll let you know any question you have, trust me, we had a group that we had to create. And so we've seen different cases of different people getting married along the process. And there are different ways to go about it. So you can also send me a message and I would help you out. So that's that about this video. Thank you so much for watching. Do not forget to like. Do not forget to subscribe. Do not forget there are so many vlogs on this channel. I've been documenting my whole uh, journey from the first day I landed to settling to finding a house to setting up my house and to getting the house the way it is right now so you can check all of that out do not forget to like do not forget to comment do not forget to subscribe do not forget to follow me on instagram <laughs> do not forget to check back on the next video and i'll see you guys later or sorry i'll see you guys at
next time. Bye.